What sniper rifle did the <coughs> When a bunker buster bomb is dropped from a plane, it penetrates deep in bunker buster bomb is dropped from a plane. It penetrates deep into the ground and can reach an underground bunker before exploding. These bombs are designed with a delayed fuse that is activated when it's dropped. And once they reach the ground, their speed and hardened steel casing allows them to burrow deep. The delayed fuse ensures that it detonates after reaching the bunker. When a bunker buster I don't know what I'm gonna say is those people, or should I say those preppers, you think their little bunkers are gonna stop these missiles from getting them? Nah, bro. If you're taking the MOCB being RFID Michael's HIP or the brain's HIP, you actually done? <laughs> the laws got weapons that you, that you, yeah, you even considered. For example, this man, a bunker buster. That carries nuclear payloads that can travel underground. <laughs> There's no escaping the judgment of the hell version of the man. And also, I found this article here, man. It says US Air Force has a medicine for evil regime deep bunkers, but it needs more. <clears throat> and it says, desperate to avoid US air attacking the vent of a major war, America's foes are digging in literally. <laughs> China, North Korea, and Iran are all building more and deeper underground military facilities, and the Pentagon is scrambling to keep up with new bunker busting bombs. <clears throat> and essentially, if America's got this, you already know Russia's got it too. After all, the, the, the blessing is the sword. And this is the newest of these bombs made a surprise appearance over the Mojave Desert back in March, photographer Ian snapped photos of a U.S. Air Force Boeing B-1 bomber refueling from a USAF KC-135 <clears throat> tanker. There was something unusual under the swing wing. B-1's forward um, foliage, a large bomb. It says aviation expert David was one of the first people to see um, Rusheko's photos at first. Oh, these weird names, man. Um, is it since... I don't know, man. I'm just going to call him C for now. And it says, for the bomb might be a GBU-31, an unmarkable 200-pound, not 200, 2,000-pound satellite-guided bomb. But then he looked closer. It wasn't as GBU-31. It was a new munition. A rarely seen 5k pound GBU 72 designed to penetrate dirt and rock before exploding. A bunker buster. <laughs> uh, oh, praise to you, Hell in House German. <clears throat> Isaiah 54 and 16, and like it says, Behold, I've created something that blows the coals in the fire, and I bring forth an instrument for his work, and I've created a waster to destroy. And yeah, when the Lord have made these weapons of indignation for the purpose that he might use them, for the purpose that he may use it to execute judgment. And imagine this Smith being these scientists, man, that basically put these missiles together. <clears throat> and even then, first and foremost, it goes into um, those Nazi scientists, or you could say World War II. They were literally... Um, they were literally the first ones to make a nuclear bomb, which that paved the way to these missiles that we see today, man, that can house nuclear warheads. Carrying on. <clears throat> yeah, this is a GBU 72. It's special with its high tech fuse and extra hard casing. The satellite-guided bunker buster is both highly penetrative 
and rel relatively small. In other words, it combines the best qualities of the US Air Force's existing bunker buses, the 4K pound GBU 28 and the 27K pound GBU 57. The GBU 28 is small and light enough to be carried by the US Air Force's Boeing F 15E fighters, but it penetrates less than 200 feet of hard earth. The GBU 57 should penetrate deeper than 200 feet, but it's so big and heavy that only two US USAF warplanes types can carry it. The current B 2 stealth bomber and the future B 21 stealth bomber. Both built by um, Northrop Grumman. We don't know how deep a uh, GBU-72 could dig before it explodes, but lethally, le or should I say lethality, is expected to be substantially higher compared to similar legacy weapons like the GBU-28. Oh, so okay. Uh, uh. I'm just running out of breath, man. Oh. I'm stuck in, man. Alright. Yeah, where was I, um... Yeah, the GBU-72 might not be as powerful as the Master GBU-57, but it's also not limited to carriage. By the tiny fleet of just 19 B-2s, or the somewhat less tiny future fleet of 100 or so B-21s, the US Air Force first tested the GBU-57 on an F-15E in 2021. The Air Force has around 200 F-15Es, and is replacing half of them with newer F-15 EXs. The surface also has 44B, uh, 44, cool, is that could carry the GBU-57 and if the B is, is R compatible or in suck here, the B-1s are compatible with the bombs. There's no reason with US Air Force 76 Boeing. Yeah, suck here. B-52 bombers, not to mention the B-2s and future B-21s, shouldn't also be compatible. And this is all that is to say, many hundreds of American warplanes could carry GB-72s during a major war. Yeah, something like World War Three, for example. The Third War. Um, we know what John said. The Third War coming quickly. And this is these planes could go after um, shallow by buried targets on the smaller force of bombers hauling GBU, GBU 57s goes after deeper buried targets. <laughs> so basically, if the law wants to get your ass with these missiles, he can. If you think you're going to hide from, from these missiles or from these arrows and you're taking the MLTB, think not, man. They're going to hit their targets. I can address 16 and 13. And it says, for strong, he's riding a bend of the bow. His arrows that shoot are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the end. <laughs> into the ends of the world. So, yeah, man. These missiles are highly accurate. Not only that, there's going to be angels, man, guiding these missiles, man, to make sure it. It's, it's, it's perfect, man. The, the, the perfect shot. <clears throat> yeah, I'm carrying on. This is the range of a potential targets is daunting. Iran has dug underground bunker complexes to house rocket launchers, fire squadrons, and critical parts of its grown nuclear weapons enterprise. I don't understand. <laughs> that's not to say that's a problem. That all Iran's doing is standing their ground. Literally, that's all they're doing. 
<laughs> they're standing their ground, and Esau don't like it. So how much for the the Israelites, man? You got the prophets prophesying and exposing Esau on all sides. How do you think Esau feels, man? <laughs> it, it, it makes sense when Jacob show is going to come. Esau's going to be like a madman, sparing them. He can finally take out his anger that he's been holding in all this time. Or you could even say that perpetual hatred. Alright, so Rocky, man, I need to... I need to... Um, change this, man. It's annoying, man. It's keep coming off after 30 seconds. <clears throat> but yeah, carrying on. Um, yeah, it says, I knew underground nuclear complex is apparently more than 300 feet. <sighs> Fuck you, man. Oh, but no, I keep you with him, man. 300 feet underground. It says, North Korea has also buried parts of its own nuclear weapons complex and also maintains vast underground bases for artillery, rockets, fire jets, and even helicopters. Often dug into the sides of mountains. It's not for no reason. US and South Korean troops routinely train for tunnel warfare. And <laughs> uh, it just reminds me of um, that scripture when we talked about hiding them from every hole and every hill or in, in, and in the rocks. <clears throat> and so China is digging in to the people's. Um, Liberation Army maintains a robust and technological, technological, technologically advanced underground facility program to conceal and protect all aspects of its military forces. The Pentagon explained in the 2023 edition of its annual report on the Chinese military that the China, the China's under underground bases, house headquarters, and munition stockpiles, nuclear warheads. And beautiful man, nuclear warheads, supply depots, and air, ground, and naval forces. China has thousands of underground facilities and constructs more each year, according to the Pentagon report. Yeah. Who knows when the we saw probably got spies over there in China, man. How else would they know? How else would they get the intel? And this is in a major war with any of these foes. Iran, North Korea, or China, a token force of GBU-57 armed B-2s might be too small to dent the underground infrastructure, and a larger force of fighters carrying GBU-28s might be powerless to penetrate the deeper targets. The GBU-72 should address this dilemma by arming hundreds of American warplanes with deeper digging bunker buses. And yeah, man. <laughs> that's basically the end of the article, man. And like you said, man, they got the GBU seventy two, which is literally gonna be used to go deep beneath the earth, man, to clear out the monkeys. And even then, they don't compare to the intercontinental ballistic missile. And the reason why I say that is because of what the prophets of old have said, or what the servants of Yehovah Shemar Shai have said in this book. Man. Malachi 4 and 1 it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn us in the oven, and all the proud yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And that day cometh that shall burn them up, says the Lord Yehovah Shemar Shai of hosts, that shall leave them neither root nor branch. And evidently we know. Trees, the, the roots go deep beneath the earth, and like they go very, very deep, man. And the reason why these roots go deep into the earth is because there's water down there, man. Like literally, when when it, it rains, where do you think the water goes? It goes into the earth, and the trees know this. Hence, why the roots is stretch all the way down, and that's why the roots keep growing, man. So they can get that water source. So even if it doesn't rain. The, the trees are there. The trees can s s still drink, man. It's it's a wonderful thing that the Lord have done, man. 
<clears throat> well, yeah, like, like I said, when these, these roots go deep into the earth, and <clears throat> when the day of the Lord comes, like it says, man, there ain't going to be no roots left, man. Meaning, these missiles are going to destroy a, a whole a whole lot, man. It means these missiles are powerful as hell. And we're going to find out, man. We're going to find out. And let me get this real quick. Second Peter 3 and 10. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. We are going into those nuclear missiles or those intercontinental ballistic missiles exploding, man. And the reason why the heaven is going to pass away is because those mushroom clouds are going to come up and they're going to cover the, 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 the heavens, man. Since you're going to cover the sky, you won't be able to see the moon, nor the sun, neither the stars. And then look at the time, 1.4. Call all your words and I will share. And let's carry on. It says, and the elements shall mount with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So, so you see, a whole load of things is going to get mounted. Man. And it says, seeing then. That all these things shall be dissolved. What man a person ought you to be in? All holy conversation of godliness going into your way of life, man. <clears throat> and that the scriptures be saying, man, rehearse the righteous acts, which rehearse means to practice, man. Practice means perfect. The Lord already knows we ain't going to keep the laws 100%, man. Hence why there's grace and mercy. Hence why we can call upon your help, Hashem, how shine, and ask for forgiveness. <clears throat> And it says, looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall mount with fervent heat. And even, like it says, man, this destruction is going to reach all the way up into the heavens. <laughs> and that's how great it's going to be. <laughs> and we know this because, and what it says in Revelation 15, man, <laughs> Revelation 15 and 2. It says, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And that sea of glass that it's talking about is the firmament. Like the glass being the actual firmament. And the sea being that was that's been held up there. And to understand that, Genesis 1 and 6. It says, And the power said that there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and it divide the waters from the waters. And the powers made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. <clears throat> and the powers called the stuck here, I literally just skipped one. Verse 8. It says, And the powers called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. <clears throat> so that lets us know, man. There's water above the firmament, man. And that's the reason why it's called glass, man. Because it's transparent. You, you can't actually see the firmament, but you can see what's being held up there. Just like a window, man. <laughs> and that reminds me of that scripture where it talks about the, 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 first, um, the first death. Like it says, man. What's it called, man? <clears throat> so look here. Before, before I get caught up in it, it's basically um the, the, the first death, or you could say the flood. It talks about how the Lord opened up the windows of heaven. And the water came down. Basically, the Lord opening up the firmament man, and causing that water to come down and flood the place. <clears throat> well, yeah, going back into um, Revelation 15 and 2. So, like it says, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And yeah, that fire being that nuclear destruction, man. 
<clears throat> and like Peter made mention, the fire is going to reach all the way up into the heavens, man. But it's not going to go past the firmament. And it says, um, and them that had got victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. So the let that were being up into those chariots, they were above the firmament. Why? Because the destruction was so great. They had to, leave, they, they had to be above the firmament, man. And even then, they're going to see the reward of the wicked. And let me get, let me get this, man. Behold. Revelation 11 and 12, it says, And they heard a great voice from, from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So even then, those who have taken the MLTB are going to, they're going to be down there, man, watching. Hoping they get burned up with the nut. They don't, they don't get touched with the missiles, man. And the elect, <clears throat> they're they going to see it, man. Because they're going to be present with your chair. And hence it says here, in Revelation 14 and 8, and it says, And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great sea, because she made all the nations to drink of the wine of the wrath. Of her fornication, going into its philosophies, its mindset, its way of life, and it says, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, going into following its laws, which they're gonna make it a law that you're gonna have to um take the RFID micro CHIP or the brain CHIP. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to um, be a part of its system. <laughs> it says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out with our mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So evidently, the, the, the holy angels and the Lamb, they're going to be above the firmament. And they're going to be with the elect, man. <laughs> and just to, just to add on, Matthew twenty four thirty one. It says, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and he shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And guess what? They're going back up, literally over the firmament, man. <clears throat> and even then, like I may mention. They're going to see what's going to happen to these people that, that sinned against the Lord, man. Psalms 91 and 8. It says, Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So, yeah, man. <clears throat> Those who get beamed up into the chariots, they going they, they to see people getting born up, man. They're going to see... <laughs> People's skin mounting up. Just like I made mention here, man. Zechariah 14 and 12. It says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord Yahweh Bashem Hashem will smite all the people that fought against Jerusalem, being um, the Lord's people. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. So they're going to be melted, man. And even then we can get this Ezekiel. 22 and 20. And it says, As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it, so will I gather you in my anger and in my fury and I will leave you there and melt you. I remember Peter said, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. As you think about it, the people are also made up out of the elements. So they're going to be fueled for the fire. Literally, the fire won't be put out until there's nothing to burn, man. That's when it's going to start. When there's nothing left. 
and says, Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and you shall be melted in the midst of us. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst of us, and you shall know that I, the Lord, Yahweh, bless him, shall pour out my fury upon you. And also, like it then mentioned here in verse 20, it says, I will gather you in my anger and my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. <clears throat> Meaning, they ain't going to be delivered by the chariots. And only that, you got this as well, man. Genesis 15. And. Oh, where is it? Here we go. This is over here. Second hundred fifteen and twenty. So the whole says the power. Yahweh, but I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and living us to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. So yeah, man, the Lord's gonna bring that war, man. And they're gonna fight. And it says like as they do yet yeah, this day unto my chosen. So will I do also and recompense in their bosom, thus serve the Lord Yahweh by Shem Shai. My right hand shall not spare the sinners, being Yahweh Shai. Like David said, man, his Lord said unto my Lord, sit down my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And it says, um, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. The fire is gone forth from his wrath, and have consumed the foundations of the earth. And the sin is like the straw that is kindled. Yeah, like Malachi said, man. <clears throat> Let me get it, man. Yeah, like it says, um, for behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud gear, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that come I shall burn up instead of the Lord of hosts. So yeah, those that have taken MOCB, which obviously we know that's a sin. <clears throat> so like it says, man, the fire's gone forth from his wrath and have consumed the foundation of the earth and the sin is like destroyed as kindled. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children from the power of the fire, not my sanctuary. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. And this is what I was making mention of with um, Ezekiel 22, 20. So he talks about leaving them there and mounting them. It says, For now the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For the power of Yahweh shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against them. So yeah, man. Those who take the MOTB being the RFID micro CHIP or the <clears throat> brain CHIP, that, that's the judgment, man, to get touched by those missiles, to get touched by that fire. But yeah, man, I hope this is edifying. I'm going to give a praise. I'm going to glory to you. Help us. Shalom. 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 Shalom.